Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome to the 47th episode of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. Can't believe I've done 47 of these. I'm trying to make them shorter and shorter, uh, but it doesn't seem to work out. So I'm going to just start using, I'm, I'm going to like cut the number of comments in half and see if that helps. Uh, because you know, the attention span of people, even though the attention span of, a, of YouTube viewers is way beyond a TikToker. <laughs> It's still, you know, kind of short, so that's why I'm going to try and whittle it down a little bit. And me just talking like this is just going to make it longer. So, you know, that's the dichotomy here. You know, by the way, on TikTok, and I should have shared the comment here, but I didn't. Uh, but on TikTok, someone actually said, and this was, I think, on a four or five minute video that I did on TikTok. They actually commented and said... Um, I have to play this at double speed so that I can get to the point that you're making. Like they're that impatient that they can't watch a five-minute video. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> First comment comes from Experimental2525. And they say, Know and believe are very... Different things. People have accepted believes as knowledge, but is not. So I understand the sentiment behind this comment. Um, knowledge and belief are definitely two completely different conditions of state. Knowledge is positive performance. Believe is not. Because you have the particle of negation BE. And then if you parse the word, you will find that that other particle, L-I-E-V-E, -E, means love. You know, when it comes back to it. So, believe means no love. So, yes, there are very different things. And when someone, as this individual states, accepts belief as knowledge or belief as a fact then they are participating with assumption and presumption. Much like people with perhaps religious beliefs or people that take YouTubers at their word when they make claims that uh, I shut down the Supreme Court and yet you still see people going in and out of the doors. There's still court cases. There's still people being sent to jail and stuff like that. So, yeah. There's a huge difference between belief in fact and, by extension, belief in knowledge. Thank you for the comment. Another comment from Experimental2525, and they say, PBS. I remember the interview. He was asked about their proper relation between the Federal Reserve and the government or the presidency. Oh, and this was a comment on a post that I made where I quoted Alan Greenspan, where he basically says that there is no government authority that can 
override the Federal Reserve, a private corporation. Uh, the proper relation between Federal Reserve and the government, <laughs> proper means no thoroughness, because PRO means no, and then PER means completely thoroughly um, closure. So proper basically means no closure relationship between Federal Reserve and the government. Federal no serve and the government or the no side contract, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I know that Colin David Ivan Wink Colin Miller was fond of saying president means no simulated denture or something like that, dentures. Uh, but, you know, I don't have any closure on, on that, just like I don't have any closure on his meaning of united, where IT means citizen. Uh, but it's fun to talk about and fun to listen to the guy. And it's just very interesting that people do not realize what the Federal Reserve actually is. And when you see politicians or anyone out there saying that they want uh, to fix the system, which, by the way, friends and neighbors, there is no fixing the system. It's rotten from the core. So whatever you do is going to be built on that rotten core, and it's not going to make a bit of difference. But I digress. Um, any politician or public mouth figure out there talking about, you know, let's rise up and let's, we're going to, I'm really going to make change vote for me if they're not mentioning the federal reserve and what it is and speaking out against it fake news and we have a flurry of comments from carol beard 2621 on the old mark cachon christopher video i did when I talk about Mark getting kicked off of YouTube, Mark lowercase k, that is. And this individual says, do you work for 147? Question mark, question mark. And then they say, you know who? And then they say, do you work for 147? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Kind of reminds me of the intro to that Iron Maiden song, Prisoner. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but for some reason, that's what it reminds me of. It's coming in my head right now. And I did uh, cool, give Kuliana to Carol. Um, no, I have no idea what in the hell you're talking about. Uh, if you're coming here talking in code, it's not really going to make any difference to anybody because no one knows what the hell you're talking about unless they're in your private little circle and you guys have a code for 147. <laughs> By the way, this is what I do on this YouTube channel. Um, I'm a solo content creator. I do confidential workshops where I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar to those who seriously want to learn it. And to do that, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I navigate on a donation give basis. I do not work for anyone. I do work for you by putting up over 700, almost 800 videos on this channel if you choose to study them. But if you're coming from that guy, Mark Lowercase K, then I'm pretty sure that's not what you're here to do. I'm pretty sure you're just here to do whatever you're doing here. But thanks for the material. Next comment comes from member Snook Loop 99 Thank you very much for the membership. I appreciate it. Much gratitude. And they say, oh, it's a quote. It starts with a quotation mark. The oppressor has nothing more than the power you confer upon him to destroy you. Where has he acquired enough eyes to spy upon you if you do not provide them yourselves? How can he have so many arms to beat you with if he does not borrow them from you. The feet that trample down your cities, where does he get them, if not your own? How does he have any power over you except through you? How would he dare assail you if he had not cooperation from you? Etienne de la 
booty. 16th century. As I said in the comment to Snook Loop 99, I said, I'll bet dollars to donuts that neither ETN nor you have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Although I do appreciate the sentiment of this quote, to me it's just a, a bunch of, uh, how do you want to say it, um, boisterous, uh, theatrical generalities blanket statements that don't really help anything. They don't present any solutions. Say you have a child that's born, okay? And uh, the child is maybe two or three years old. Did that ch child give power to anybody? Is that child giving power to anybody? Do you see what I'm saying? Logically, I mean, in a grandiose sense on a theatrical stage, oh, yes, this is you know, uplifting and whatnot, and I don't know, galvanizing. But when you get down to the practicality of it, it makes absolutely no sense. The child did not give consent to anyone for anything. These things come with knowledge. The more you learn, the more you are able to take command of your own vessel and become autonomous. And one great way to do that is through correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. So Snook Loop 99, whomever you are, channel member, if you're serious about the grammar, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop. Thank you. Next up, we have an extensive dissertation from someone named Dominic D'Angelo, 4801. And for whatever reason, they decided to bring a personal story about personal beliefs onto this channel. The thing he was, com or they, sorry, they were commenting on was the Alan Greenspan quote. Again, the fiction quote. Which, on a side note, is so interesting. I got so much feedback on a fiction adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun quote rather than a correct sentence structure video, which is very interesting. People love to share their opinions. That, that is true. So, from an Alan Greenspan quote having to do with the Federal Reserve, this individual takes it way off into left field talking about religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs. And you'll see, that this is like extensive. They put a lot of energy into this, so let's dig in. Do you believe personally in a supreme being, one that may have authority over our timelines, choices we make, words we speak, whether traditional God, higher dimensional beings, etc.? <sighs> Maybe I'll just answer things as we go here so I don't have to go back over it. Do you believe personally in a supreme being? I do not participate with beliefs. As I stated earlier, belief means no love. Uh, belief is opinion. It's assumption, presumption. So there is no belief in this construct. I participate with facts, things I can certify. Uh, timelines. Time does not exist. Only the now space exists. Choices we make, words we speak. Um, I can certify that I make my own choices. I cannot certify that someone else is behind the scenes pulling my strings. Whether there is or there isn't, I can pretty much say that there isn't, but I don't know that for 100% sure because if someone is controlling someone else and they're so good at it, how would you know anyways? And what the hell difference would it make if they were or they weren't if you don't know about it? So, you know, this is where people go off into left field and get start worrying about things that they that have nothing to do with real, real, R-E-A-L, <laughs> sorry, with uh, correct practical functionality using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which I bet dollars to donuts, Dominic D'Angelo does not have closure on. So, no, I do not participate with traditional God concepts, higher dimensional beings. Absolutely not. Uh, I have no certification of any of that. I've had a near-death experience. I'm not very religious, 
They're not very religious, but they are religious. I believe what I can prove or see, quantum physics, I've experienced other dimensions, dimensional beings. One thing in the near death that I remember, the sense of peace everyone mentions. My experience was the same as most people. I just remember a few more details than most I've heard. It starts with floating above my body, seeing the light. When I got that sense of peace, though it wasn't from the light, I went to the light, it got dark. And an entity took me by the hand and brought me to a big TV screen I would describe it as. I remember a female entity, although I don't remember for certain. Once in front of the screen, I was given that sense of peace. And my life and memories were replayed for me. I was shown every interaction, action, conversation, embarrassing incident, happy moment, you name it. I felt immense ecstasy, unexplainable to any earthly emotion of happy. Uh, I think you described it as ecstasy, immense ecstasy, so I think you did a pretty good job in describing it. I was shown how everything in our life was pre-planned, not just that, but let's say I tell my cousin about quantum grammar. I was then shown that how that influences his conversation with someone else, then how that positively affects the next person and so on proving that we have no control and all this was meant to happen for some larger purpose, which I forget the answer to. This individual is sharing a near-death experience, which I definitely appreciate. I'm going to audit it looking at it through the lens of correct sentence structure, through the lens of logic and critical thinking. So this individual, Dominic D'Angelo, is going to use a near-death experience, what, whatever he experienced during that as proof of something. And to me, that's very similar to someone having a dream and then using that dream of, as proof of something. Um, I dreamt that I jumped off a cliff and I flew to Antarctica with my hands out. So that's proof that I can fly, I guess. You see what I'm saying? So to me, with a critical eye, that doesn't, it's not proof of anything for me, for for them it may be, but, but definitely not for me. I just remember thinking, oh, now it makes sense. When I was shown that and given the answers to why are we here, who is God, etc., I don't remember any answers, just the sense of peace of finally knowing the answers. Long story short, that's the short version? <laughs> Shoot into my body, wake up, and remember all this in detail. I describe it as best as being instantly filled with the knowledge only God would have. I've also heard it described as being every grain of sand on every planet in every universe. That felt fitting. How do you know that there are planets and universes? And how do you know that there are sands on set planets? That's, that's interesting. Assumption there. And then they said, uh, again, the question is, do you believe we have ultimate authority or could there be a being or multiple beings that have a level of total control? So to address this, flat out, what's interesting to me in a psychological manner is why is this individual concerned about my position on set matters? Like what does that have to do with what I teach or anything like that? Now, on the other hand, I can see why someone would want to do want to know that answer, but for different reasons, perhaps, than he has. Like, I know that our, there are people out there that align themselves with Colin Russell, hyphen J. Colin Gould, uh, simply based on the fact that Colin Russell, hyphen J. Colin Gould uh, claims that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior. So they purposely align themselves with him because they have that in common, because they both believe in an assumption presumption of a character from a book uh, being a savior. I mean, what, what, who does anybody need saved from? But anyways, I'm, I'm not even going to go into that. But people will align themselves or not align themselves based upon other people's uh, positions on things. So as I stated, you know, my position is I participate with facts. I don't participate with assumption, presumption. Um, you know, this... Uh, this is a pen. I can show it to you. I can prove it to you. This is a fact. If you make that list of, of boxes to tick off so that you can credential your facts, if God or whatever doesn't tick all the boxes, it's not a fact. It's an assumption. 
So can you show me God the way I'm showing you this pen? I don't think you can. While you've had these experiences, this near-death experience, which I appreciate you sharing here, of course, with all due honor and grace, um, that those experiences may be facts for you. But when you bring it to the geometric level playing field of contract, now you're asking people, or not asking, I'm not saying you are or not, if you want people to, be, to I almost said the word believe, if you want people to participate with those things as facts, you will have to prove it. All right? Unless people are just going to take you at your word, which I never take anyone at their word unless I trust them and know them. And I definitely don't know you. So while those things may be facts for you, they're not facts for me. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that this individual is asking me this and, and feels so strongly about it that they asked me twice. Um, so to answer the question, do you believe we have ultimate authority? No, I don't participate with the word belief. All right, I don't participate with assumption presumption. But taking the volition behind the question will say, the question is, do you participate with the idea that we have ultimate authority or could there be beings or multiple beings that have a level of total control? Yes, of course, there is a possibility that that is the case. However, I have no proof of it. And it doesn't matter to me anyways at this point because I don't have any proof of it and as far as I'm concerned, I'm autonomous. I make my own choices. That's the end of the story. I'm my own authority. Until someone can prove otherwise. <laughs> so, there's your answer. Thank you very much for sharing. And, if you ever want to get closure and get serious about studying this grammar, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. But I to caution you that if you do begin to get closure on this, it may definitely adjust the viewpoint that you just shared. And the final comment comes from member Snookloop99, and they say, and what is that external authority? And it's a comment on the post I made with the, about the Gallon Greenspan uh, quote again, where it says there is no government authority. And Snook Loop says, what is that external authority? The, the quote doesn't say anything about external authority. It says, no government authority. So maybe they misread it. It is a myth that has no basis in reality. Such external authority always develops into a destructive machine when the majority unthinkingly or out of fear accept, obey, and follow the commands and wishes of that authority. In reality, no one has genuine authority over anyone else. Once that fact is realized, a person can say no and break the destructive habit of obedience to the myth of authority. NT. I don't know what that NT means. Uh, people be speaking in code. Do you work for 147? And then that other person said, PBS. I don't know what that means. Is that public broadcasting system? NT. Not today. <laughs> I have no idea. But anyways, uh, <clears throat> Mike Juliana, back to Snoop Loop 99, Nam Nagar, whoever you are, I don't know your correct name, is that, um, as Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller once told me, don't refuse anything. You know, you, you, you're not here to say no. You don't have to if you have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. You don't have to say no. You just do things with correctness and you invite the other contract parties to come onto the geometric level playing field of contract with you to participate with the correctness. There's absolutely no need to refuse anything when you have closure on the grammar. And if you did, then you would definitely participate with what I just said as a fact. But because you don't, um, just like I used to have, it's like a perception of black or white. It's always a fight against the man or whatever. And I do not consent and blah, blah, blah. And you go out and protest, no test and whine and whatever. 
you have a problem, you got to present a solution for rule one, rule equal. My solution is correct sentence structure. So if you decide to get closer on it and learn it, which you can do by applying for a workshop with the email address at the bottom or the almost 800 videos on this channel, then you'll see the point that I'm making that the struggle is not really necessary once you get closure and are a steward of your grammar. Thanks again for the comment and for your membership. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.